okay. In this lecture, we're going to follow up on the previous uh, one uh, and continue to look at uh, shear and moment diagrams. Uh, but now we're going to talk a little bit more about the mathematical relationships here uh, so that we can think about uh, the meanings of those, uh, of those diagrams. So, on the previous lecture, uh, we looked at a simple supported beam up here. And we found that the beam had a constant load function. Um, the shear had a descending linear relationship, a linear function. And then there was a quadratic function for the moment diagram. And you're probably thinking to yourself, wait a second. Ah, that looks familiar, right? Constant, linear, quadratic, something's going on, right? So we're, we're going to figure out what it is. What's going on here? It turns out that W, V, and X are all directly related to each other. And we can start to see why if we look at a slice. So I'm going to take this very generalized uh, simple supported beam here. So it's sort of got this crazy support because we're trying to say this, this will, the analysis we're doing here will fit for just about anything. Uh, any kind of loading. And so I'm looking at a little slice here. And if we take that slice, we have a moment and a shear on both sides, right? Um, and then we have a load, a generalized load that's going to be W times delta X. Now we can do a uh, equilibrium analysis on these. Uh, and so let's look at the forces acting in the y direction first, right? We have a positive V over here. Uh, we have a W delta X here. And then we have another V here. Now, if this load were zero, then V would have to equal V, right? Because those would be the only two forces. But if they're not equal to zero, then... This guy, let's, let's assume that this is actually pointing down. It's a load pointing down, right, that on this thing. That means that this one has to be smaller than this one, right? If this uh, applied loading is downward, then it's, we're, our equilibrium equation is going to be this shear is equal to this shear plus this shear, right? And that means that our shear is going to go down as we go from here to here. And that's exactly what we saw before, right? We had that nice linear uh, shear diagram in which the shear was really high next to the support. And then as we got farther and farther to the right, our shear became um, smaller and then ultimately negative. Okay. So what this tells us is, is if there's a load here, then our shear on the two sides of the element is going to be different in order to have equilibrium. We can make the same case for a moment equilibrium, right? If we took our, we're going to use this as our axis right here. If we take a moment equilibrium, if there, uh, we have this moment turning clockwise, this moment turning counterclockwise, if this shear is anything, right, it's going to provide another moment, right? There's going to be three moments. And that means this moment here, if this guy's pointing up and creating a counterclockwise moment, this guy here has to be bigger than this one, right? Because this plus the moment caused by this is equal to that, okay? And so here we have a relationship between how large the shear is uh, and what the difference is between our moment on each side of the equation. Now you might say, well, what about the moment created by this one? And that's a little tricky, but when we do the math, um, as this delta X gets smaller and smaller, M and V stay the same, but W delta X disappears. Okay, and so we get to get rid of that. Um, in that um, in that analysis, because this ultimately is going to be a very very small moment, which is the point I make down here. 
So the big point here is if we do this uh, differential analysis of a slice here, what we find is, is that the change in shear is related to how much load is being applied. And the change in moment is related to how much shear there is at that section. If we shrink these delta x's uh, and get a differential equation, what we find is these guys, right? Which is exactly what we just said. The change in v, the change in shear from one side of the element to the other is related to w, and it in fact is proportional to it. The change in moment is related to shear. And we can, <laughs> so yes, so, where does this, where does this uh, help us? Well, this guy is the slope of, um, of these um, diagrams, right? dv dx is the slope of this guy. So the slope of this is equal to wx, which here is constant and negative, right? So what's the slope of vx? Constant and negative, right? This tells us that the slope of m is equal to shear, right? So my slope initially is positive, right, and large. It becomes positive and small. That slope gets smaller and smaller. I'm still going up. My slope is zero. I reach a max. My slope is now negative and small. And then my slope here is negative and big. And there's my negative and big slope. Okay, so this helps us visually understand these diagrams. We can flip this too and go the other way and talk about integrals, right? So the change in v is the integral of wx. So let's let's go from here to here, right? My integral of w from here to here is going to be negative, right? And that tells me delta v. And so my delta v from here to here is, in fact, a negative, right? And it's negative the whole way down. Any section I took here, I would find that my uh, integral of w is going to be negative, uh, and in fact, it's going to be constant, right? Um, and I'm going to find that my delta v is going to be negative the whole time. So take a minute and make sure that you can think about that. Think about that in terms of slope. That's what this guy is, right? These are the slopes. So the slope of v is equal to w. And then down here we're saying, as I sum up w, that's going to give me the change in v. Okay, The area under this curve is going to tell me how much my v plot changes in that same period of time. So that's the, those are the mathematical relationships between w, v, and m. Now, if we're, uh, we can use these, these equations to help us actually just sketch a more, uh, say, a more complex loading and get a good idea of what a shear and moment diagram might look like, right? So last time, we were like, let's find the actual equation. Here, we're trying to get just a, a good sense of what's happening in this beam. So let's take our uh, simple supported beam up here with a fairly complex loading to it. And we're going to try and sketch Vx. So get a piece of paper out, right? Pa press pause, get a piece of paper out, and see if you can create this sketch. So at the shear support near A, or the shear near support A, is going to be positive and high. We know that right from our analysis last time. This shear here is holding up this entire load, except what's being held up by the support here. Um, and so that shear is going to be really high. There's going to be a lot of uh, downward force on this section. Um, and that downward force here is a positive shear. Um, so we've got a big positive shear at, say, uh, point zero or point A. Now, W equals dV dx tells us that the slope of Vx is going to be equal to W. So what does that say? Well, here we have a positive slope, 
or I'm sorry, uh, a, a negative value of w, right? Uh, but it's very small. As we go here, we continue to have a negative value of w because our load is pointed down, but that slope gets larger and larger. So we're going to start off with a small negative slope, and then by the end, we're going to have a large negative slope. And then we need to think about what's happening at the other support. And at the other support, we're going to have a very large um, negative shear, right? Because on that right side, this is holding up all of this. Okay, so there's going to be a large shear force on this small section here in the downward direction. But by sign convention, that's a negative shear force here. So we know we have a positive high shear. We know how the slope is going to work. It's going to go down the whole way slowly at first and then more quickly. And then near B we're going to have a large and negative shear force. And so you should have a drawing now. You've got a drawing, right? <laughs> or you're looking at the notes and you can already see this. And that's what our plot's going to look like, right? And you might even notice like this has a higher or lower magnitude of shear than this. Why? Because all of this load is near B, right? We would expect B to be holding a lot more of the load here. And that means the shear force is going to be much bigger here. So the magnitude of this shear force is bigger than that shear force. All right, so now let's uh, see if we can do the same sort of process with our moment diagram. So in this case, we can start with uh, the assumption that at the pin support, we're not going to have a moment. So our moment uh, is uh, diagram is going to start at zero at point A. So you can you know, put your pencil there on your sketch. And then what's going to happen to our slope, right? Well, initially, we have a high v value, and we know the slope of the m function is equal to the v value. So we're going to have a high positive slope, so that initially it's going gonna, it's gonna to be going up um, and to the right, okay? It's starting at 0, because we know there's no moment at a. As uh, x increases, the value of low v becomes lower. So our slope gets smaller and smaller until at some point it becomes zero, right? And so when our slope becomes zero, our moment diagram is going to be fl flat, okay? Because our v value is zero, so the slope of dm dx is zero, or, or rather the slope of, uh, of the m function. And then our slope becomes negative in the second part, right? So around here, our slope is small and negative, but then eventually becomes large and negative. So we would expect a positive slope at first, then a flat slope, and then finally a negative slope. At support B, we have a roller. So again, there's no support for a moment, uh, and our moment is going to be zero. So what does your sketch look like? Uh, it should look something like this over here. Okay, so we can start with our load diagram up here, and just by using our intuitive understanding of those equations, we can come up with our shear moment diagram, our, our shear diagram, and our moment diagram. And so that's why those equations can be really useful for us.